First, we need to find the concept of electromotive force, or EMF. I will often refer to it as EMF. The symbol for the electromotive force, or EMF, is <coughs> that guy. It's kind of like a curly E. Uh, and it represents the ideal maximum voltage across a battery. This is to be distinguished from something called the terminal voltage. Now, both of these terms were used last year and they were used interchangeably. They are not the same. Not here, not anymore. This is a T. Terminal voltage, that's correct. Delta V sub T, the terminal voltage. The terminal voltage is literally the voltage across the terminals. I know, it's a very helpful description, but it helps you to realize that the EMF is the ideal voltage, whereas the terminal voltage is what you actually are going to measure when you measure the electric potential difference across the battery. All real batteries have an internal resistance. Usually, we illustrate this internal resistance with a lowercase r. So the lowercase r is the internal resistance. We are going to walk through a specific circuit so that we can see how a battery works and what the electric potential difference is across the terminals and the EMF and all of those things. We're going to look at a simple diagram. This circuit diagram is in your book. It's on page 860. If you want to take a look at it. And I'm going to write some stuff on it, so I'm going to actually draw this down as, well, actually, I don't think I need to. Got plenty of stuff. Okay, so this symbol right here is the symbol we use to illustrate a resistor. This, of course, a battery resistor, and we have the current. You can see the current is flowing. If we were to take our anthropomorphic positive charge and we were to place it right here, class, is it going to be resistant or attracted to this positive charge? That didn't make any sense. <laughs> is it going to be repelled or attracted from this positive charge? Hell. So it's going to move to the right. So notice, this is the direction of the conventional current, the direction that positive charges would flow. Is this the direction the charges actually flow? No. No. Isn't that fun? The negative charges actually flow opposite that direction. So this, this piece in yellow, illustrates the battery. We have this, which illustrates the EMF of the battery and R, which illustrates the re internal resistance of the battery, and the potential difference from A to B would be the terminal voltage. So the terminal voltage, delta V sub T, would equal the EMF minus the potential difference across the internal resistance of the battery. Notice, it's a negative because we're going to have uh, electric if the current flows across that, we're going to have an electric potential difference that's going to go down because of the internal resistance of the battery. The voltage goes down. The voltage drops. We already have an equation for the electric potential difference. It is equal to the current times the resistance. So this is the terminal voltage. And notice the terminal voltage is going to be less than the EMF the maximum ideal voltage. There is only one circumstance under which the terminal voltage is going to be equal to the EMF. Under what circumstances is that? Uh, Travis? There's no resistance. Ah, you can't have a battery with no resistance. All batteries have an internal resistance. The other option, Tyler? No current. No current. So the only way for the EMF and the terminal voltage to be the same is if you don't do anything with the battery. 
As soon as you measure the electric potential difference across the battery, you actually have current flowing from the battery, and therefore it's going to be less. So if you just leave the battery there, you could say, I know that potential difference, the terminal voltage is equal to the EMF, but I can't measure it, because by measuring it, I actually change it. So anyway, this is the only way is if the current is equal to zero, which, as you can tell, is not actually very useful. A thing to notice is that as the current increases, the potential difference across the battery, the terminal voltage, is actually going to decrease, right? Because of that internal resistance, as you increase this current, the terminal voltage is actually going to go down. Now, I do want to walk through this figure. Because I think this is a very good figure. It's also on page 860. And this just walks through the basic idea of what you have here for these charges. So notice points A, B, C, and D. Point A is right before the battery. Point B is after the battery. And the battery includes the electric potential difference, the EMF. It also includes the internal resistance. And then we have the resistance of uh, the resistor. So, our little charge, it goes through the battery. It increases in electric potential difference or electric potential energy. So that little electron gains electric potential energy. And then it goes across the internal resistance of the battery and it decreases the electric potential energy. Then, as it goes along the wire, nothing happens, right? Because the wires have zero resistance. As it goes through the resistor, it decreases its electric potential energy. And what's happening from here to here in terms of what's happening to that energy? Mr. P. It is being converted to light, sound, and heat. Heat. Probably just heat and sound in this particular case. The light is only for a light bulb. This is just technically a resistor which doesn't have now, I want to draw the parallel between what we just talked about there and this base one. Because this is the electrical version of the space warp. In the space warp, we have the elevator. The elevator takes that little sphere and increases the gravitational potential energy. Just like the battery increases the electric potential energy of the charged particles. Now, there is resistance in that elevator which means that some energy is actually dissipated as heat and sound while it's going up the elevator, which is the internal resistance of the battery. Then the little sphere gets released onto the track, and as it goes along the track, that gravitational potential energy is decreased, and it's converted to heat and sound and kinetic energy, which is exactly what's happening here. And it highlights one of the things that people don't fully understand, which is what that we have the same electrons. They just keep going through the same path. Woohoo! I keep going through the same path. But this electron, it gains electric potential energy, and then that electric potential energy gets converted to other things, and then it gains the electric potential energy again, just like the steel spheres in the space war. Okay. This is the electrical equivalent of the space war. It's not quite as exciting. You can't see any of the charges moving around, but you can imagine. 